In today's video, we're flying to Bora Bora. We'll run through all the options, the pros and cons to consider, take you on two of the flights from the US to the main airport, and then finish off with one of the most beautiful short haul flights in the world. Big favor, give us a thumbs up to help with the algorithm. If you're new and you like travel and you want to be smarter about it, then consider subscribing. As a background, the main airport for the region is PPT, Fa'a'a, also known as Tahiti International Airport. Bora Bora is part of French Polynesia, which is an overseas collective of France. Given this, it's not that surprising that there are direct flights from Paris. The two main options being Air France and Air Tahiti Nui. There also are direct flights to Papette from Tokyo and Auckland. For our purpose, coming from the US, you have two starting points, Los Angeles and San Francisco. If you're elsewhere in the US, then you might either want to reposition here or book something expecting a layover. For SFO, you have two options, United and French B. For United Economy, prices are generally in the 700 to so maybe 1200 range. One big consideration is that these leave during the early afternoon and arrive early evening. This can be a huge disadvantage and end up costing you a little bit more, and you'll see that in the middle. French B is the low cost airline that is a bit cheaper, but doesn't have as many flights. It usually leaves around midnight and arrives in the morning, which is a lot more ideal. For LAX, you have Air France, and then generally two Air Tahiti Nui. Depending on timing, it can be a bit more expensive, so both airlines will have flights leaving around midnight, and then Air Tahiti Nui will have one leaving during the day that gets there at night. Pro tip, Air France is part of SkyTeam and a close partner of Delta, that means that you can actually book this as a Delta ticket and have it as a code share. The main draw being that you can use your Delta Sky Miles and also potentially access lounges if you have cards like the Amex Platinum. For example, the Delta Sky Club, which is pretty nice. If prices are the same and you don't live in the Bay Area, I probably would choose routing through LAX. Maybe I'm alone in this, but I think the LAX airport is a little bit better. For a trip in 2018, we pretty much spent our time in airport lounges via Party Pass and also Delta. Some of these don't exist anymore or they're not part of Party Pass, but for us, it was still a fun day of eating. For the Air France economy flight, you get a pillow, blanket, headphones, not the biggest screen, but decent entertainment system. Also a bit harder trying to find Bora Bora on the map system. For the first meal service, we had orange juice, yogurt, applesauce, a Twix bar, cheese, and also bread. It is an overnight flight, so this is a good snack before bed. Once you get a bit closer, there is also breakfast with cold cuts, cheese, bread, yogurt, jam and butter, water, coffee, fruit cocktail, and also a main, which was sausage and potatoes. It doesn't look the best, but it tasted pretty decent. Once you arrive and you start getting off the plane, you can admire the business class seat and what you missed out on. Definitely a lot more spacious and might be a good redemption if you are optimizing for comfort. Note that the terminal here is pretty small and you do need to take stairs down and be comfortable with that and then walk a little bit to the terminal. To be fair though, I'm a fan of this because you get a pretty nice view of the plane. Terminal is a short walk and then once you walk in, there probably will be people playing music and I call this the welcome committee. Pretty cool in my book and I'll let you listen for a little bit. After this is going to be passport control, but pretty fast and straightforward. And after that, you just grab your bags and you're ready to go. If you are arriving in the morning, then you pretty much go right away to your next flight and to Bora Bora. Okay, but what if you arrive at night? That's pretty much what happened a year afterwards when we flew United from SFO. Since we have the Platinum card, we went to the Centurion Lounge and enjoyed our time. Also, since we live in San Francisco, it is a lot easier for us than trekking down to LA. Maybe I'm weird, but I'm a pretty big fan of the chicken at Centurion Lounges and also some pretty good veggies. I know a lot of people probably eat better than me, but this is a pretty healthy meal and a great way to get protein. Heading onto the flight, it's not too bad at all. To be fair, we did have United Platinum status back then, so we did get a free upgrade to Economy Plus. So a bit better, you have more leg room, and your knees probably are not going to hit the front. You do get a pillow and blanket for the flight, but it does feel a bit more flimsy than the Air France one. Entertainment system is a little bit better, but otherwise pretty standard. The cool thing with this system though is that you do have a pretty good view of the flight, and you actually are moving a lot more southwest than I thought you were. For whatever reason, mentally, I thought it was more just western. For food, you have bread, orzo with chicken strips and four cheese sauce, mango sorbet, and small salad with dressing. I think I actually preferred the variety with the Air France flight, but depends on you. Didn't really sleep as much on this flight, so did keep looking at the map a few times. Once you arrive, pretty much the same process, walk downwards, walk to the terminal, and then meet the walking committee. For whatever reason, there were less people for passport control, so a bit easier here. 
As mentioned, the main disadvantage of a flight that lands at nighttime is that you have to find accommodations for that night. If you're looking for cheap options, you're probably spending about 150, and then if you're looking for nicer hotels, probably about four to 500. For us, we opted to walk through the parking lot, up some stairs, cross the street, and then up a giant hill. It definitely is a workout, and if you are not comfortable with this, then just call a taxi. All right, so we finally made it to our room in the Tahiti Airport Motel, and these are our lovely bags that Sebastian lugged up the hill because he refused to take a taxi. So whoever refuses to take a taxi, make them lug the baggage up the hill. So this is pretty much a bare bones hotel. It's kind of like you get what you pay for. It was around $100 a night for your hotels.com. And we're only here for less than 10 hours. Our flight is at 6 a.m. tomorrow. So we're probably going to wake up at five. It's currently 7 p.m. Flight landed at 6 p.m. at Tahiti Airport. It was already dark outside. We thought about booking on the IHG Tahiti properties here, but we were like, there's not really a point if you can't really enjoy the room and it's not really worth the points or $300 since you're only here for like less than 12 hours. So yeah, two beds, very small TV. I believe there is free breakfast in the morning. Very basic and straightforward room for about $100 a night. So that wraps up the room tour and we're going to go get some rest before we head out to Bora Bora tomorrow. See you in the next clip. If you wake up early, there is a simple breakfast downstairs for the motel. Main takeaway, if you arrive during the day, then you have pretty much the option to go right away to your next flight. If you arrive at night, you have to find somewhere to sleep and then head back to the airport. For both, you check in like normal and there is a separate boarding area. Next up is probably the most beautiful flight in the world. Air Tahiti runs flights from PPT to POB Bora Bora and usually flies ATR-42s or ATR-72s. These are twin engine turboprops and they're perfect for short haul hops between islands. These are very efficient aircrafts and they can land on very short runways. The flight itself is 45 to 50 minutes and offers some of the most scenic views that I've ever experienced. You can see the islands, lagoon, reef, and mountain. You definitely want a window seat if possible to maximize the experience. Flight paths can vary on wind conditions, so both sides can be pretty nice. Generally speaking though, the right side offers some pretty good views when you're landing, and that's pretty much the iconic shot of Bora Bora. If it is an empty air flight, then maybe have one person on both sides. And to be fair, when I was sitting on the left side, it was still pretty nice as you can see on the screen. Either way, you're probably going to get a great view, and I would just enjoy the experience. The interesting thing is that this isn't just meant as a form of transportation, but an integral part of the Bora Bora experience. It basically prepares you for the rest of the trip since for a lot of people, it's meant to be a once in a lifetime thing. Bora Bora is the most famous island in French Polynesia and a big focus is on natural beauty, the Blue Lagoon, and also some amazing resorts. The Lagoon is one of the reasons why people come because it offers clear turquoise water that's amazing to snorkel and dive in. Also tons of marine life like stingrays, sharks, and fish. The lagoon also has pretty calm water due to the structure of the island and the fact that there is a barrier reef around the area. There also is a big mountain in the middle called Mount Altamenu, which is a dormant volcano. Weather is pretty nice year round, but you generally want to come during the dry season, which is between May and October, where it's a bit cooler and less rainy. June and July can be a bit tough because people are off for vacation, and for France, this is pretty much their Hawaii. Also, if you are trying to swim with whales, you generally want to come later in the season, between September and November. Tons of things to do whether you want to experience Polynesian culture, try different foods, swim, snorkel, do water sports, or just enjoy your time with Player 2. After landing, you have one more stop before you get to your hotel, or potentially two to three stops. The major hotels will have booths where you can check in and they have boats that bring you directly to the resort. There also is a separate local shuttle that is free that brings into the main town of Vitape. This is a pretty cool ride where there's an upstairs area and also a downstairs if you don't want to get wet and you want to stay out of the sun. Generally pretty empty both times we've been and a lot of people taking this are going to be locals, family, visiting locals, people going to Airbnbs or going to smaller resorts. It depends on you, but both times, we ended up going into town first. If you drink or you want to buy snacks, then there is a grocery store in town that's going to be a lot cheaper than the hotels. Alternatively, pack more snacks yourself. Bora Bora is known for black pearls, and there are two main shops here that offer generally better prices and also more variety. It might be a better stop for the middle or the end of the trip, but definitely worth considering. Also, depending on when you go, you might run into a celebration. 
For one of the trips, we ended up going during a holiday, so they had food trucks, events, and a lot of other stuff going on that was pretty cool. The three main holidays during dry season are Autonomy Day, Basti Day, and Assumption of Mary. There also are a bunch of restaurants here if you want to grab a bite before heading to the hotel. The main disadvantage of going into town is getting to your hotel. If you're going to IHG Lamona, then you can take a taxi, and same thing with the Lasso, but for a lot of other ones, it might be a lot more complicated. At the same time, this is the pickup point for a lot of locals that are working at the hotels. Still though, I probably would double check of your hotel and what the shuttle service looks like, that way you're not stranded. If you're doing a honeymoon and you're not trying to review stuff, it might make sense to just take the main hotel shuttles and enjoy the ride and your time at the resort. Main takeaway, it definitely is a journey, but also one of my favorite flights from PPT to BOB. Also the fact that this is just the start of your vacation before even enjoying the hotel. Hotels can be pricey, but that's where points come in. On a side note, if you want to learn more about cards and support the channel, we do have links on the website, asksebi.com, and also down below in the description box. Make sure the links are competitive, that the cards make sense for you, but otherwise it is a huge way to support the channel, so thank you guys in advance. If you made it to this point, leave a fish emoji in the comments down below, and I'll try to heart it and also respond. Three questions, number one, is Bora Bora on your list? Number two, would you rather get there in the morning or night? And number three, which flight would you take from the US? Let me know and everyone else know in the comments down below. Big favorite, thumbs up, consider subscribing, but otherwise hope you liked it. See you next time.